All right. Remember this. You have now a game, uh, air quotes, that lets you change the direction of the of the chappy. Reload. Starts by going one way, hit space bar or any other key, and it changes direction. Okay, so a couple of things. Um, as I was saying before, uh, when things go wrong, you can't really tell why. Okay, can you? You know, if you and, and I'll show you how things can go wrong really easily. If I just say uh, make this uh, F a big F, um, and uh, so I've just changed one character in the file. You know, and uh, I hit it now. It's not w nothing. Nothing's happening. It's not working. Why? How do I? How do I figure it out? How do I? This is how do I? What we call in the industry debug. This is what computer people call debugging. I got a bug in my software because the software is not doing what I expected it to do. It's doing what I told it to do, or rather, it's doing nothing because I told it to do something it didn't understand. Uh, so you know, let's fix. Let's fix game code of three, and uh, do what we do. What we always do. Take game code of three. And and I've not forgotten that you got homework to do. Uh, yeah, you're not getting away with it that easy. I know you've got homework to do, and I'm going to show you how. And I'm combining debugging and finishing off the homework, which you might think is a bit of a cheat because you didn't know how to debug, and I'm relying on debugging to finish off the homework. Well, deal with it. Okay, so we're on game code of four. And uh, game code of four at the moment is just like game code of three. Yeah. Okay. So the homework you will remember is um, rather than just toggling the direction based on the spacebar or any random key being pressed, uh, what we wanted to do was um, 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 go left if. Z is pressed. Go right if X is pressed. Okay. These are the things we're gonna do. Okay, and we're gonna, you know, but I'm combining two things here: debugging and uh, handling this event. Okay, so as I was saying before, you know, you've inadvertently typed something wrong and your program no longer works okay so we have what we call a debugger okay i'm going to make this window full screen so we can see a bit more what's going on so this is f uh, this is firefox and firefox has a built-in uh, debug console okay so we can go into here and we can hit the developer button well this is fire let me show you the version let's check the version about <coughs> uh oh no that's not what i wanted uh, about uh, about about Firefox. Okay, uh, version thirty. Okay, uh, yeah, it's got a, a a developer console built in now, and um, it's not the only one. I think if it, do I have a Safari on here? Uh, Safari? No, not Safari. Pff, I don't use Safari. Chrome. Have Chrome on here. Right, anyway, Chrome, Safari, Firefox, even Internet Explorer—they all have de uh, debug console built in, in these days. So I will hit this, and I will hit uh, uh, Web Console, and it brings up this thing at the bottom of the screen. And it, oh, it's got all kinds of words appearing in there. Okay, now I'm going to hit Reload, Reference. Loader is undefined. It's not really helping me that much. Hmm. Um. And then you know missing semicolon before statement game code line forty eight and that's this line it's a missing semicolon before statement well it's not really told us a great deal, but it's definitely told us there's something wrong with this line look syntax error missing semicolon before statement you know and actually if I did view source page source so these are all useful. Yeah, uh, okay. Not that useful in this scenario. Uh these are all these are all the kind of tools that we use for debugging. Okay. 
So it's telling me something's wrong on this line, and you know, hopefully you'll go, oh, I've done a capital F for function, and that's what's wrong. Yes, yes, of course it is. And you'll fix it. Okay. So function, function. Okay. Hit it. We're still working. Yes, we're working. Okay. So while we're in here. Um, there are other things we can do with the, this uh, this debugger. So we got console, which shows us output. Okay, and there's some warning messages and stuff. We can use it for our own useful messages. Okay, so for instance, uh, we can use a command called console dot log, and then we can put a string in here, doing work. Okay. If I hit reload now, oh, doing work appeared in the console, in the console, and the string doing work appeared. That's my log message. That's my. So this is log is a function, and it's a function on console. What's that? Well, console's an object. We spoke about objects before. Remember, documents an object, uh, windows an object. So console is an object, and it's got a function called log. And we said doing work okay uh, so we can do that um, you know, so let's put one in here console.log key pressed let's run it again doing work key pressed doing work key pressed doing work key pressed doing work you'll notice like doing work gets there's a there's a there's a number in a circle here a red circle here that's basically because doing work is being pr is actually being sent to the console many many times, but it's but rather than just spewing it multiple times at the console, it's just writing uh, in the badge here how many times how many times doing work got printed. So I'm going to get rid of that doing work because it's 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 noise it's noisy. Save. Okay, um, but we'll keep the key press. I think we'll keep the key press one. We'll keep this for now. Okay, reload. So this is not noisy. This is quiet. Key pressed. Key pressed. Key pressed. Oh, as you can see, it's still doing it in the badge because nothing else has been sent to the console. So if the next message is the same as the previous message, it just increments the value in the badge. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is in the debugger is set something that we call a breakpoint. A breakpoint. Uh, see this button here? Pop out in a separate window. <coughs> okay. So now I can have my debugger. I'm going to snap my debug window to that side, and I'm going to snap my browser to this side. Don't get confused. This is the debugger. This is not my text editor. My text editor is still here. I know there's a lot of windows now. It's getting very com confusing. You know, when you're a real, you know, when you're doing like real world programming tasks you end up buying like two three monitors and you put them side by side because you just need a lot of screen real estate okay but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click right here right next to where it says 49 these are the line numbers in case you didn't work that out line number blah 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 so right next to 49 I'm tapping I click the left mouse button okay and you'll notice a blue dot arrived <coughs> that means I've set a breakpoint. That means when the program gets to here, it's going to stop. It's just going to stop. Okay. So let's run the program. Uh, 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 so let's go here. Let's reload. Okay. Notice it's running, 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 running off the end of the screen. Yeah, did that. Okay. Let's reload. Okay. Now I'm going to hit the key and you will notice that that blue dot is now going green and we can see various things going on. I'm going to full size, full full screen this window. So we, let's, let's look at what we've got. So we've got the, the program that we've written here. You'll notice that the words are all actually different colors, right? Uh, so function is, is kind of in, in a brownie color. Var is in a brownie color. Um, Set timeout is in blue. Add event listener is in blue. Uh, the s these strings are just in brown. So it's highlighting the syntax to make it clear what's going on. You know which 
you know, is is this a keyword? Yeah, it's a keyword because it's brown. Is this a function? Yeah, it's a function because it's, it's blue. This is a variable. The variable's blue as well. So this is the code here. It's telling us some stuff about what file we're executing. Call stack, right? Uh, that's interesting. Um, this uh, this is less interesting here because the call stack's not very big, but it's basically telling us what function we're in. We're in key down listener. Uh, yeah, key down listener. And what line that functions on. And then over this side we have variables. Okay, so we already know what the variables are, right? Function scope loader. We already know that direction is left, and we know uh, interval is a hundred because we de declare them. But but what else do we have? We have event here. Event is a variable. We didn't declare event, so we don't really know what's in it. But the browser does know what's in it, and it's telling us right here. So this is mighty useful because we can see what information comes in in this event that the browser tells us about the key that was pressed. Okay, so we can see several things. We can see that it's got a type, and the type is key down, which is no surprise because we're in the key down listener, and we said we are listening for the key down event with the key down listener function. So no no surprise that the event has got a type, and the type is key down. But what is useful is there's some other information in there. There's a key code, which is 32. Hmm. Okay. If you know your ASCII, you'll know that that's very significant. There's also this key, which appears to be a string because it's got a a quarty, and then it looks like there's a gap, and then there's another quarty. Okay. Pay attention to key. Okay. So watch this. What happens? I'm going to resume the program. Uh, so if I hit this play button, the program will resume. Okay. You'll see that dit, 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 dit. I hit another key. Okay. I hit the H key in that time. You'll notice again we're in the key down event listener. Key down listener. I can click on event again. Again, this variable event which gets passed into me, which we don't really understand. And you'll see that that key variable actually says H. And key code is 72. Uh, don't worry about that. So, uh, uh, but still, you know, the event type is key down. And then there's lots of other stuff, uh, timestamps, and yeah. but so key is going to be useful. So so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a key press. Okay, so let me uh, uh, hit resume again. Okay, we'll just let it die. What we're going to do is we're going to come into our key down event listener. I'm going to on this in this console message. I'm going to I'm going to augment this with more information type key press key press event type and then key pressed was event dot key okay I'm gonna hit reload so I want to get rid of this breakpoint now because I just want to run. I want to look at the console output. I'm going to uh, make that window a bit smaller. A little smaller. There you go. Okay. F5. Okay. Then every time I press a key, key press was S, F, S, A. Ooh, shift. Z, X, Z, X, ooh, left, right, up, down, oh, look, you can all kinds of keys, ooh, Z, X, Z, X. So the homework was to change direction based on whether the Z key or the X key was pressed. Well, you know what? I think we've got a way to do it now. Let's go in here. So, if Z equals event dot key what was the homework then direction equals left 
else if x equals event dot key direction equals right. You know what, I'm going to do one other thing in here. I'm going to do a default. Because it's always good to have a default. I'm going to get rid of... I'm going to get rid of that one. We don't need that now. Oh, that, or oh, that. And I'm going to hit F5. And I'm hitting random keys, but it's not doing any good. Random keys, not doing any good. However, if I hit X and Z, I can control the direction that this character is moving. Success. I need never die again. I will always escape. That's about it for now.